Hi guys, this is a video on the uh, the use of the, the new Mini Pro uh, programmer that arrived from China today. It's the uh, Mini Pro uh, TL866A. I've uh, downloaded the Mini Pro software and also a flash dump from the forum and we'll just run through installing the software and connecting the programmer and programming, programming our first uh, chip on it. So hopefully uh, all will go okay. I have installed this program on this computer before just to have a look at it and that was before I ordered the programmer so there might be some remnants of that software already uh, on the system. Um, but I've deleted it, uninstalled everything, uh, so this is as close to a fresh install of the software that we can uh, that we can get. Um, I'm just going to right click and unblock both of these files. Like that, we'll extract the binary file directly here to the desktop. So that's the binary file we'll be using. We can get rid of that. Uh, this one we will now extract here as well. And that is just an exe file to uh, to install the software. So actually I'll keep that because that might be useful later. Uh, so we're now either double click this uh, or right click and select run as administrator. Select yes. And this should just run through the installation. It's just going into the C program files location, which is fine. That's that. Yes, we definitely want the inst to install the USB driver. Click on next. And that's done. We'll just click on finish. Okay, that seems to be that. I think we'll just plug in the programmer now into the USB socket. That's that. Uh, seems happy with that already. As I say, I, I did have uh, the software installed. Uh, so at this stage, you might see some warnings about finding the correct device driver and uh, it might go off to Windows Update just to check that and, and uh, install it so just just let it do its thing and uh, once it's done you should just be able to run the mini pro programmer file there so that's it that's the main interface uh, and yes it has in fact stored some details on the computer um, probably that folder that it just uh, wrote the file to was, was still there from the last installation because it's remembered the last chip that I, uh, I actually looked at and in fact that's the same chip that we'll be having a look at today. Um, I've uh, put a W25X32 IC into the new adapter that we've got but if you want to select the ICs you would just click here and uh, and then type in whatever you're looking for. In our case it's a W for wind bond uh, but you could just type 25X30C and see what the options are. You know, see there are some others. We know that ours is a wind bond because it's got the W in front of it. So we just click there. Um, yeah, a number of options. I think we just need the base uh, W25X32. So we'll highlight that and hit select. And uh, it's now up there. I'll just pop the adapter into the ZIF socket with the IC already in it. That's that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just load up that uh, CLO binary file. We'll just click on the open folder, sorry, open file. It's already on the desktop and we'll just look down, whoops, gone past it. Double click on that. Uh, binary it is, yeah, no problem there. Load mode normal. Yeah, don't need to worry about that. Uh, click OK. Yeah, there's all the information in the binary file. Um, the options we've got, we can erase the chip before programming it, and that's probably not a bad thing. This is a blank chip, so it shouldn't need it. But I'm going to leave that ticked. It's ticked by default. Obviously, we want to verify the read after it's been written to, and uh, check the device ID. That's also fine. 
uh, off protect before programming absolutely no idea what that means uh, something I can read up on but I'm leaving it ticked uh, by default uh, so then the options we've got that's obviously read yeah uh, right um, okay program program the chip and erase chip so we'll hit uh, program so what have we got uh, that's the chip oh there you go there's a handy image of uh, where the IC needs to be uh, it's actually at the top of this SIF socket um, same as the orientation uh, indentation actually on the programmer obviously so if we just click click program now that should start to program okay so it's erasing <laughs> and actually you won't be able to hear this but if I put my ear up to the programmer I can hear a very quiet hissing noise <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember hearing that on the uh, GQ4X, but it's obviously doing its its thing. We have the power light on red, and obviously the run light is uh, is actually constantly lit at the moment. Again, as you would expect. Uh, okay, so that's erased the chip, and we've now gone into programming mode. Interesting, it gives you the time in milliseconds. Not sure the benefit of that. <laughs> I guess it's part of the software that they can easily include, so I might as well have it. Now looking at the speed of this, this is assuming this only goes to the end and then it's done, unlike the erase chip that went through it a few times, this is a lot quicker than the GQ4X. And I know, having spoken to Zen and some other people, that the very, very expensive programmers, you know, 250, 400 pounds, are you know faster still. But this is much quicker than the GQ4X, as long as it is actually finished when it gets to the end there. So we'll see in a few seconds. Very impressed so far with this. The, the build quality looks, uh, you know, is really great. Nice plastic, the, the box that it came in is nice quality. I really was expecting just some rubbish to arrive, but you know, it really isn't. Okay, so it did finish the writing right at the end. And uh, program one. Yeah, that's how long the, the write took. And now it's just verifying. And once that comes back okay, it's uh, we're good to go. Yeah, so no issues with this so far. Oh, I'm really impressed, especially at the price. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Okay, you've got to risk ordering it from from China at the moment. I you know, I may decide to keep this in stock and uh, and sell it myself. Uh, we'll uh, we'll have to see on that one. Okay, well that's great. That's the first chip and programming successful. Uh, so just cancel that, take the chip out, and that's it. Job done. That's another CV109 chassis <laughs> saved. Um, the other options are, are very much like normal programmers. Uh, if you wanted to blank this chip, you could just uh, fill all of these uh, bytes with FFs. Uh, look, it's already calculated the start and end address and the value. Just click OK. As you can see, it's all Fs now, which is uh, means it's blank. So I guess we could now program the IC. Um, oh, actually, we've got an erase option as well. Let's try to erase this chip. Of course, the, uh, all of these options won't be supported by every chip you use, but I, I'm pretty certain you, you should be able to erase this. With that let's try it. Yeah, there we go. That's erasing the chip. Again, useful. It, yeah, I, mean, I like to fit new chips, but if you haven't got a new chip, why not try erasing the old one and reprogramming it? It's, it's worth a go. Uh, I buy these chips from China. They're they're fairly reasonably priced when you buy them in bulk. Um, so yeah, if you haven't got one, try erasing it. Of course, if it fails erasing, uh, then I would say that the chip is definitely faulty. 
Um, same with programming. There we go. So that's erased correctly. You know, if erasing or ID checks fail or programming or verify fail, then obviously you've got a faulty chip and you've got to pop another one in and uh, and program it. So yeah, program, erase, test. That's blanked out. Not sure what that is. Tools. Oh look, we can do a system check. Remove the socket, yeah, otherwise it can't check it properly. Let's click on test. Okay, over current protection. Yeah, well, so it's clearly tested successfully. No problem, just cancel that again. Really impressed, yeah, it's, it's excellent. Um, I can't see any issues with this at all. Um, it's very yeah. I mean, the software is very similar to the GQ4X or, or any other uh, programmer you might uh, have. Now I've got the IS, oh sorry, ICSP uh, adapter, so I would need to select that. But I'm guessing that that will only come up. Uh, let's try an Atmel chip. Let's say an AT Mega. 328, uh, 328P, that's the chip that's used on the Arduino boards. Uh, now you see that I was correct. <laughs> this one's, uh, if you're using, if you select a chip that you can use the ICSP port, you can either program it directly uh, on the programmer or I can tick the ISP, ICSP port and. Uh, yeah, and then you can just use that. It can, this particular one has the port on the end, as I showed you in the video earlier on the cable. And I could just plug this into my Arduino board uh, or pickaxe, whatever it is, as long as it's got the ICSP port, and away you go. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I can't think what else to tell you, really. It, 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 the price is, uh, is fantastic. Uh, I see no reason not to um, not to recommend this to everybody it's certainly got all of the options that I would expect um, work perfectly on the chip that I've just tested there are 12,000 uh, chips handled at least uh, from all these different manufacturers uh, including the new uh, TSOP ICs that uh, some of you need to uh, need to work on. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Just a quick look at the software. It certainly works. And uh, let me know what you think on the forum. And I'll speak to you later.